There are a million tools to choose from these days to run an online business, so how do you know which ones to use? For the past three years, we have honed in our tech stack, and these are the 15 tools that help us run a calm, profitable, multi-six-figure business. And in case you didn't know, Wandering Aimfully is our unboring monthly coaching program where we teach people how to run more predictable, profitable, and peaceful online businesses. If you sell digital products like online courses, memberships, downloads, templates, etc., we believe these 15 tools can drastically streamline your processes and improve your customer experiences. All of the tools I'm about to share are important, but if you want to know how we rank them, you can stick around to the end of the video and I'm going to put them on a tier list. And of course, all of the tools are linked below in the description if you want to check them out for yourself. Tool number one, Arc Browser. We spend a good majority of our day in a web browser, and when Arc came on the scene in 2023, it was a revelation. Browser tabs have been around and have always been helpful, but the way that Arc organizes them and sets up spaces, this was a game changer. The Arc Browser helps us manage more tasks more efficiently with less overwhelm, and I'm not sure you could ask for much more in a web browser. Hello and welcome to my Arc Browser setup. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because this isn't supposed to be just an Arc Browser review, but if you're familiar with tabs in a normal browser, those are what's here on the left, but this whole area is what's called a space. And so I have a bunch of different spaces for different things. And then up here you have pin tabs at the top of things that you go to that are across all spaces. And then I've actually just created this little kind of like calm one myself. I just uploaded an image of a gradient and then set it as an emoji. So I can always go back to this if I just kind of want to like clear out what I'm looking at on screen. So this first space is basically like things I'm doing pretty much every single day or just kind of like random stuff that's going to be done in a couple days. And then a lot of these will get deleted as I finish whatever this task is. The next space is for Wame specifically, the business this YouTube channel is based on. And so I have our WordPress links, podcast host, all this other stuff, and then a bunch of other things in these folders, just like you would have bookmark folders in a normal browser. Then Teachery. So we have our Trello board where we manage all our features, our customer support platform, a bunch of different links that I use all the time, two new tools that I'm trying out, and then just a ton of different things that are in this folder of stuff that I don't normally look at. And then this is my time wasting space. So I come here, you know, lunchtime or whatever. One of my favorite little things is this frame.wtf. I pretty much do this every day. It's just guessing movies based on stills from the movie. Very fun. If you've never done this before, you now have 835 movies that you can go through and guess. That'll be a ton of time wasted for you. You're welcome. Then I have my food and coffee space. So tons of recipes because I love baking and doing things. And then all the coffee shops that we're trying to purchase from here in Portugal. I want to try every single Portuguese coffee company I can. So that's fun. A whole space dedicated to Portugal. So this is all of our life stuff, car, money, shopping. You can read the folders there, but all that stuff gets saved. And then finally, this is a new one for this year. These are my cool AI tools. These are just things that I'm finding and kind of keeping in this space that I can play around with and just see if they can help us in our business at all. Tool number two, Framer. All of our previous business websites were built using Squarespace or WordPress. And while those did the job, it feels like Framer is taking the next step forward into what the future of building websites is going to look like. We used to have a cumbersome workflow that you're probably very familiar with where you would do an awesome website design in Figma or some other app, but then you have to get that design into code somehow. So you'd have to pay somebody, you'd have to know how to do that skill. And that was just a huge step in the process that was a big hurdle. But with a tool like Framer that's similar to Figma, you're actually designing the website and writing the code without even knowing it behind the scenes. So as you design, Framer is working its magic and you end up with a publishable website after the design is done. Full disclosure, we are not quite yet using Framer for our Wandering Aimfully website, but it's coming very soon. And unfortunately, we are going to still have to use WordPress for our members only section. That's because of sunk cost bias, not wanting to move through $35,000 in recurring payments over and possibly break them. And because we have a really custom dashboard built in WordPress that we really do love that we don't want to get rid of. Tool number three, Restrict Content Pro. Speaking of WordPress, this is actually going to be a little bit weird to talk about this tool because we wouldn't actually recommend that you use Restrict Content Pro. I will say that Restrict Content Pro has done a great job of the thing it's supposed to do, which is helping restrict access and accept payments for members only content on your website. But it's not a great experience and we're just trying to use a lot less plugins these days, especially on WordPress. However, here in 2024, there are much better tools to handle the restricting of members only content. And you can layer these on top of whatever website platform you use. It'll have a more intuitive interface, better customer support. And we would recommend shamelessly using Tea Tree, our software product that can help you sell any type of digital product you want with gated content, whether that's an online course or a membership. And if you don't want to use Tea Tree, you can also check out something like MemberSpace. Tool number four, Affiliate WP. 
Sticking with WordPress for just one more tool, nearly 70% of our new Wandering Aimfully customers come from existing members, those being affiliates. Unfortunately though, using Affiliate WP feels a lot like using Restrict Content Pro, and now these two companies are owned by the same parent company, and again, we're just trying to get away from recommending people to use WordPress plugins. If you do have to use WordPress for your website, and you are looking to have affiliates, then Affiliate WP is probably one of the best options out there for you. We do like that Affiliate WP has a couple of built-in pages for affiliates to look at their dashboard and their metrics, but it does leave you wanting more, so we actually used our product Teachery to build a course, which is our affiliate resource hub, and this has all of the swipe files, creative copy, and lots of other information there for our affiliates. Tool number five, ConvertKit. We've used a ton of different email marketing platforms over the years, starting with MailChimp, then actually using ConvertKit back in 2015, ActiveCampaign, Campaign Monitor, Drip, and then we came back around and switched to ConvertKit again. ConvertKit has actually done a really good job of having just the right amount of features for the modern digital creator. Their user-friendly email editor, the visual automations, the simple lead magnet pages, and their customer support offers a pretty good overall solution for email marketing. The one huge thing that we absolutely love and has paid off in dividends is their creator network, where we have actually seen our email subscriber growth increase by 300% using their built-in recommendations, and we almost had to do no work to have this increase happen. Tool number six, Screen Studio. We use Screen Studio all the time. In fact, as you're watching this video, you are going to see clips of me walking through something or little zooms that happen, and this is all done in Screen Studio. Previously, we would use Loom or QuickTime for screen recordings, but they're very lackluster in features, and if you wanted to do any zooms or any type of interactivity, you'd have to take that recording into a program like Final Cut Pro or any other editor, and you'd have to do that manually. And Screen Studio does all this very quickly. You can easily record your video, you can turn your camera on or off, and then you can add these little zooms after you're done recording that make it really nice, really seamless, and the quality is fantastic. I really can't say enough great things about Screen Studio. The product is really well designed, they are constantly updating it, and one of the best features is the fact that it's a one-time payment software, so you're not paying for it every single month. Tool number seven, ChatGPT. Like most of you watching this video, ChatGPT has become an integral part of our online business lives. We use ChatGPT for a myriad of tasks, including brainstorming content ideas, titles, and hooks, writing curriculums for our monthly coaching sessions, almost entirely formatting our weekly email newsletters, generating YouTube descriptions and tags, sifting through large chunks of data to find patterns, summarizing survey responses, and much more. As AI tools are emerging and evolving, we are trying to stay curious about using them so that they can replace all the mundane and repetitive tasks and give us much more time for all of the creative stuff that we actually love doing. Tool number eight, Canva. It feels like Canva has taken a gigantic leap in usefulness over the past couple years. What used to be a tool for creating simple graphics has turned into the place we go to to create slide presentations, comprehensive whiteboards for ideation, social media content, video graphics, YouTube thumbnails, and tons more. Canva has almost single-handedly replaced multiple tools for us, and we're pretty sure it's gonna continue to get even better over the years, and we're excited for that. Tool number nine, Transistor. We've been podcasting since 2014, and we have used a lot of different podcast hosting tools in that time. We previously paid for two different podcast hosting services. We were using Simplecast for our main Growing Steady podcast, and then we were paying for Hello Audio for our private members-only coaching podcast. As a listener of the Founders of Transistors podcast, Build Your SaaS, I heard Justin and John mention that they were launching dynamic ad insertion and private podcast hosting, and I knew that was the time for us to switch over to Transistor. I was a little nervous that we were going to have to move these two separate podcast hosts into one and if it was all going to go over well, but their migration was seamless and very simple. Podcast hosting should be pretty intuitive. It's not that difficult. And Transistor has done a great job of executing on this and can't say enough good things about how solid their customer support is. Tool number 10, Slack. The community aspect of our paid membership is handled with Slack. One of the most common questions we get about using a Slack community for a paid membership is do you pay for Slack? And we don't, we haven't been paying for it for five years. We have over 1300 of our members who have joined our community and it has worked out really well. There are a few things that Slack could definitely improve like having better threaded commenting replies within a thread of comments because conversations can get kind of out of control or being able to move one post from one channel to another very easily without having to delete it and start over. But overall, Slack has done a very good job. We keep our Slack community highly engaged by having a weekly accountability game that's run just through a Slack channel. And then we also have a weekly video update that gives a behind the scenes look of what we're working on in our businesses. Tool number 11, Notion. Notion is the backbone to our businesses, and there is no way we'd be able to keep up with everything that we've got going on with Tea Tree and Wandering Aimfully without it. I have to give my wife Caroline all the credit in the world here because she sets everything up that we do in Notion from all the dashboards to all the projects to all the processes. And this stuff was so good when we showed
showed it to our members. They begged for her to make it for them. So we created the Notion Starter Pack, which is a members only system for people to run their online businesses using Notion that's available in Wandering Aimfully. And we use Notion for pretty much everything from our business projects and planning to our content creation to also managing my Ninja Creamy recipes because those have to go somewhere. Tool number 12, Front. There are a handful of tools that help you manage multiple email addresses pretty well. And we've been using Front to do this for a few years. I have five emails that I'm managing and my wife Caroline has, I don't know how many because I don't look at her email inbox, but we both have a Front account. And one of the best parts is that because our Front account is connected to each other, we can then pass messages back and forth to assign them for another person to reply, or we can leave comments on them if we want to talk about and collaborate on one conversation. And then one of us can take over the reply and then manage that message. If you have multiple email addresses and you wish you could manage them all in one place, we definitely recommend Front. Tool number 13, Teachery. Okay, this one is a bit shameless, but we definitely recommend our own software product, Teachery. Our members only roadmaps and courses are all hosted in Teachery, and we love that we can customize the heck out of them so they match our brand. Teachery can be used to sell something as simple as an ebook or a digital download, or it's robust enough to handle a membership with recurring payments and affiliates. We are pouring a ton of effort into Teachery these days, and if you want to sell unlimited digital products like courses, hubs, themes, etc., you can check out Teachery, and if you want to send a message through the support chat that you watched this video on YouTube, we'll give you an extra two weeks on your free trial. So go ahead and do that. Tool number 14, Zapier. We've been using Zapier for different automations for over 10 years now. And while there are cheaper alternatives like Pably or Make, we just like the experience of Zapier and we already have a ton of zaps that we've been using for a long time. We use Zapier to automate a bunch of different things in our business, but the most important ones are when a new customer purchases Wandering Aimfully, they get added to a Google Sheet, then they get added to ConvertKit, they get some tags, and then we get a fun notification via WhatsApp that says we got a new sale. And all this happens without us having to lift a finger or do anything. And finally, tool number 15, Tally. Surveying our audiences regularly helps us build better products and create happier customers. Previously, we used Google Forms and Typeform for surveys, but now we use Tally and the interface is really slick and reminds us a lot of Notion. We use Tally for annual demographic surveys to keep up with changes to our email audience, product validation surveys for new courses or tools we wanna build, post-purchase surveys embedded directly on a thank you page, and why didn't you buy surveys sent to a segment of subscribers who click through to a sales page but don't purchase. Tally is just a really well-built tool and we love that they're also a husband and wife created business, so we're happy to support them. Okay, I have three smaller tools that didn't make like the full tools list. They also don't make that big of an impact on our business, but I just thought they'd be fun because maybe you've never heard of them. The first tool is Jifsky, and yes, we are a GIF household and not a GIF household, but anyway, that doesn't matter. What matters is you can take any video on your computer and turn it into a GIF, changing the size, cropping out different parts of it. The only thing I wish this tool had was built in GIF compression to make the file sizes smaller, but I just export the GIFs and then I import them into a GIF compression tool online, and that does the trick. The second smaller tool is Text Sniper, and this is just a little keyboard shortcut that lets you copy any text on your screen. And I really love it, especially for those two-factor authentication codes that we get via text and email that are such a pain, but Text Sniper helps me copy and paste them very quickly. The third and final small tool is Snapper, X Snapper, I don't know how to say it, but I do know that it takes really nice looking screenshots that you can set the background colors of, does rounded corners, and you can easily redact text from your screenshots very quickly with a keyboard shortcut and with saved presets. Those are the 15 tools that we use most to generate $35,000 in monthly recurring revenue with our paid coaching program. Leave a comment below if you think there is an awesome tool that we should check out for our digital product business that you love. Now, if you're curious how these 15 tools stack up, let me walk you through my tier list where I rank them from worst to best. All right, welcome to the little fun part at the end of the video here, a lot less structured, a lot more relaxed. We're gonna go through the 15 tools and if you don't know what a tier list is, S is best, F is worst, let's get going. In the F tier, the first thing we have is Restrict Content Pro. And actually, it's the only thing we have in the F tier. I just can't recommend people use this. Again, if we were to start a membership or a paid community tomorrow where we needed to gate content on our website, I just wouldn't use a WordPress plugin anymore for it. So I would definitely look for another option because it's just too cumbersome. And when there are updates, they can cause a lot of trouble. Ask me how I know. Next up, D tier. It's also a WordPress thing. You can see the pattern here, Affiliate WP. This ends up in the D tier. It's not as bad as Restrict Content Pro. At least their customer support is a lot better than Restrict Content Pro, but it just, I don't wanna use it if I don't have to. So again, if you're looking for recommendations, these are not the two tools I would recommend. I would look for other things. Tree can handle both your restricted content and your affiliates, so you could check that out. 
Moving into the C tier, these are things that are just like, these are good. There's nothing wrong with them, but there's nothing great about them. I'm not happy to scream about them from the rooftop. First is going to be Zapier. Again, Zapier is good enough. It does a good job. And I think that's it for the C tier. Yeah. So it's just like, it's serviceable. It's fine to use. Do I wish that maybe they didn't charge as much money for the tasks for what we do? Yes, but you know, I'll live with it. All right, B tier, you can see this is where the tools start to stack up. And again, these are the tools that we like using. So there's no surprise that there's more at the top here. First up is ConvertKit. So we like using ConvertKit. It's a good user experience. I know they are about to change their name and their interface. So hopefully that looks a little bit better and maybe will even move up in the ranks, but it's a good tool right now. Next up is Slack. Again, I mentioned some of the little things, my nitpicks about it. Overall, it's always trying to get you to pay. So there's lots of free trials. There's lots of things about that that are kind of annoying, but I think on the whole, it's a very good product and we like using it. Next is Tally. So Tally's in the B tier. I think the only reason it didn't move up into the A tier is probably just because it's a survey tool. So it's not like that exciting to use, but I think they've done a really good job. So again, B is really good. We're in good territory here. And then Tea Tree. If we're just being honest, we definitely think our own software product, it belongs in the good tier, not necessarily higher than that. We know there are lots of things that we can improve. We're working on improving those. We're always trying to make the platform better, but if we're just being truthful. It definitely belongs in this tier and definitely behind these other three apps. And I think that's it for the B tier. All right, A, this is getting into great territory. So these apps are great. They're better than good. And we really like them. First up, Notion. The only reason for me that Notion isn't in an S tier is because sometimes the interface is just not my favorite. It feels a little bit cluttered. It feels a little bit busy. And I know that there are ways to make that better, but even still there are some limitations. So that's probably one of my only nitpicks, although it's fantastic. Transistor, love the folks at Transistor. It is a podcast tool, so I don't think there's any chance any podcast tool could be S tier unless it gave me a ton of new listeners without me having to do anything at all. That might move it into S tier, but for now, it lives in the great category because it's very easy to use. And for the features and for the money you pay, can't really ask for anything better. Next up, ChatGPT. It's an amazing software. A lot of us are using it for our online businesses, so I think it belongs here. Maybe it'll move up to S tier at some point if it starts coding different apps and things for us. I don't think it's there yet, but it's definitely on the way and it's an amazing tool for sure. We all know that. That is the end of A tier. All right, let's move into S tier. So S tier, this is fantastic. These tools are great. If you paid attention and you know the tools that are coming, good for you. If you already forgot the 15 tools that I talked about, now you get the refresher of the best ones. Arc Browser definitely lives at the top of our list. One of the best apps we've used in the past, probably forever of any using apps that we've ever used. It is just really, really good. And we're really happy with it. Really great job team over there. And it's also free, which is amazing. Framer, we love Framer. This is definitely what the future of building websites should look like is just designing them in an app and then having that app code things behind the scenes that you don't even know about. You just press preview and you have a fully built website. It's unbelievable. The team at Framer, we absolutely love this product. Screen Studio, I can't rave about Screen Studio enough. I'm using it right now to record this clip. Screen Studio just does such a good job of the specific task of recording these walkthrough videos with zooms and other things. And the interface is just really, really intuitive. Really good job. And then finally, last up here is Canva. It's just amazing. Canva definitely is a little bit overwhelming. I know they have a new interface coming, which I think is gonna clean up some of that and make it feel a little bit more airy and light. But overall, what you can do in Canva for such a small amount of money or even the free version of their tool is fantastic. So that is our tier list. That is me ranking our 15 tools and how we like them. Just a little silly thing to end the video here with. Hope you liked it and we'll see you in the next one.